What's up, guys? Welcome back um, to the Slick Gorilla podcast. This is episode two. Um, last one was really, really good. So we're here with another one. I'm joined this day by my colleague and team Slick Gorilla, Ashley, and also a very famous guy. If you're in the hair industry or the barber industry, you know exactly who he is. It's Andrea Amigetti. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, yeah. Quite super, right. Quite super. Right. I didn't want to insult you in any way. Uh, no, no, um, no, it's okay. But yeah, I made special effort. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, you're a good friend of the brand. Uh, you've been an ambassador with us for a long while now. Um, we really appreciate all your efforts um, and your expertise is phenomenal. Um, whenever I see your videos, I always say this guy's an actual wizard. Um, so we want to learn a little bit more about you and how the wizardry kind of came to fruition. Um, so first of all, how are you doing? How's everything going? Yeah, all good. And thank you so much for all the good compliments. You're I'm welcome. glad to be here today and to be part of the team of Slick Gorilla. I mean, I feel part of the team now uh, fully. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to have the opportunity to talk with you guys and, you know, being here yeah. in general. Because I know, obviously, in recent kind of months, you've kind of stepped up in terms of your content and kind of getting your face out there. So how's that going? Yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, um, sometimes I find it quite hard, especially talking, right? Because it's my second language. So sometimes I have to think twice about whatever I'm saying. But overall, it's going really well. I'm enjoying uh, much more. I'm pushing much more content out. Super. So yeah, it's working then, out really well. Yeah, it definitely is because I see, you know, the numbers you're doing on social media, kind of all the plaudits you're getting and it's all really, really good stuff. Um, I'm not a barber, as I said before. Uh, I'm not a hairdresser either, so I can't really comment too much. But Ashley's been in the hair industry for quite a while. And I know he's kind of verified that all your stuff is really, mm. really good. He's been impressed with you as well, right? Yeah, I think for me, and me and Lee had this discussion, it's that kind of amalgamation now that you've brought into the industry very well of the technicality of hairdressing and then the precision of, of barbering. And I think, you know, you've executed that, you know, exceptionally well. Thank you. So Thank that, you that's, so much. that's what I've seen. The intricacy is is, is fantastic. Yeah, yeah so. it's, it's top notch. But I want to really kind of rewind a little bit and get to know kind of the story kind of behind you. So kind of how you started within hair. Well, it's, uh, it's quite a long story. I think I can start from when I was a little kid from nursery. And uh, being an Italian blonde kid is not so common, right? There was like two of us in the whole school. And I always felt special about my hair, believe it or not. I was like, hey, I'm the blonde kid, right? <laughs> Were the ladies kind of letting you know it's special? Yeah, yeah they, would, <laughs> they would call me Blondie. No, but the teachers, they wouldn't call me Andrea. They would call me Blondie, the blonde guy, the blonde kid. You know, so my, my distinctive feature was my blonde hair. And my mom was blonde too, and she mm -hmm. loved my hair. She used to cut my hair. So I, I think it started from young age, and I felt like, wow, hair is something important, right? It's yeah. something relevant. And that's when I started to look at people's hair and I started to decide my own haircut. You know, I had that funny bowl cut in the 90s. Oh, really? Yeah, Literally like everyone. The... Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Oh, my, God. my mom used to we need a fix photo it up. <laughs> I, I can find some, nice. I can find some. And um, yeah, she used to fix that up with her tools. She had some tools. My mom was very good cutting hair. She used to fix everyone up in the family. Yep. And I think everything started from there. My, my age, of, by the age of five, six, maybe seven. And uh, by the age of six, I wanted to, 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 you know, to pick my own haircuts. And uh, okay. uh, I was the boss of my own hair. When you say tools, do you mean scissors or actual tools? No, no, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. when you said she's DIY, yeah. you know, she's sorting everyone out. No, no, no. She used, uh, <laughs> she used an old buzzer, like okay. an old clipper. Yep, yep. And um, scissors. She had Amazing. thinning scissors and normal scissors. She had the whole, the whole kit, Great. the whole barbering kit. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like a brave lady. And so. um, I think after I, after that, in my teenage, I started styling my hair more. Okay. And that's when I started cutting. Yeah. So I started cutting around 15, um, not with the purpose of mm. learning how to be a barber. It was just, I like it. Hey, let me, let me shave your hair. It was the buzz cut era, at least in Italy, okay. right? Early 2000, everybody had a shaved head. So yeah. we all looked like, uh, I would say as skinheads. A bit punky or? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. It was just just cool, right? There was yeah. David Beckham was Beckham. shaved. Yeah, um, icon. Brad Pitt was shaved. Mm. Justin Timberlake was shaved, yeah. right? So yeah. I yeah. started shaving all my friends. <laughs> and we were all having like number one or number two all over. And then after that, it started to become like, can you shave only my sides? 
Mm-hmm. So it started off with the Clippers, to be honest. I didn't know. I didn't have a clue how to pick a pair of scissors. Okay. But uh, since since that I was so young, you know, it didn't matter back then. I just wanted to have fun. And let me ask as well, what was it like growing up in Italy? I mean, I don't know what's the difference between growing up in Italy and here because obviously I didn't grow up yeah. here. Weather. The weather, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big, big game changer. Like Definitely. When, when summer comes, we stop school for three months. And wow. uh, three yeah. months. Yeah, we don't have many holidays during the year. We pretty much have the same amount of uh, school days, but because in summer it's too hot, you can't okay. be in a you know a school room yeah. in summer. You might have forty degrees outside, right? You can't keep kids inside. So three three months of holidays in summer will be like wow, amazing, nice, nice. at the beach or at the park all day every day. I mean Corner. that that for me that is a different part of growing up maybe in Italy compared to UK. Because we got that kind of one month, haven't we? Yeah. Where we might get, we might get to the seaside, not even the beach, the seaside maybe once. Um, so I think, yeah, you got the advantage growing up in Italy. That was nice. Okay. That nice. Was nice. So then, how did it transition from kind of that doing your friend's hair to then actually becoming a paid? So um, still uh, around the age of 16, 15, 16, I went to my family and I was like, uh, Mom, Dad, I I want to be I want to be a barber. Okay. okay. I, I just like it. I like I like hairdressing, barbering. I didn't know the difference back then. I just yep. I yep. wanna cut hair. Thing. But they all told me no. They were like, Don't do it, do a different job. You 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 can do better, you know, you're smarter than that. Like, why why yeah. why why was it? They wanted more of like a I think I think like every or yeah, I think like every family in general, you want the best for your kids. Yeah. And um, I think this is not a type of industry where you, you can make like loads of money. I mean, mm. you can make money, right? But uh, you don't choose this job because it makes you rich, mm-hmm. right? You choose this job because you Passion like it. And, yeah. yeah. Mm. And um, it's, it's tough, especially in Italy. You might work 14 hours in a day. You know, you might make not much money if you're employed. You know, an average wage for a beginner is yeah. 500 euros a month. Mm. He's an apprentice, right? So yeah, he has to be there and clean the floor and then he starts maybe shaving yeah. basic things. Yeah. So it is a big passion drive, yeah. isn't it really? And so they wanted a bit more for me. So they pushed me towards other directions. In the end, I started doing something called um, industrial maintenance, a bit of plumbing. Okay. Um, There's that, not a real translation of my school in English, but... Basically, plumbing, electricity, things like... Uh, I can't imagine it. Yeah, I, I've, done, <laughs> I've done loads of jobs like that, actually. Yeah. I've done gardening. I, I used really? to fix antennas. I used to do work on metals, like carve metals with machines. Okay. Um, so all with the hands, though? A yeah, always manual. Right. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, so yeah. I'm a yeah. manual guy. I'm a manual guy. I can't... St- yeah, I'm a man. It's still guy. seemingly for me a waste of creativity. Like... It, it was, and I suffered that yeah. a lot. Because when I was doing these jobs, I was like, I can't work in front of a machine. Mm. That's the only thing I, I was thinking. I need the human contact. Mm. Okay. I need to talk. I need to watch people. You know, I, I'm I'm very social. I'm very social. I like yeah. to be in the middle of people. And that's why I think yep. the barbershop is, is the right it's environment perfect. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Uh, and um, after school, I just started working as a barber straight away. I used to cut my, my actually my math teacher's hair. Really? Just let you imagine like how, how far it was going because at school I used to cut my classmates, friends, everybody. Really? Anybody Amazing. I could. I just liked it. That's For crazy, free, then I start charging. so early as well. Yeah. Mm. And then by the age of 18, I was out working. Flying and doing your thing. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And then obviously now you're in the UK. So uh, yeah. how did that happen? Uh, it's as simple as, as it can be. I found uh, an advert on Facebook. Someone was looking for a barber in London on Facebook. And I was like, do you know what? I'll, I'll just apply. It was the sixth, Really? Yeah, it was the the 5th, I think, of August 2017. Right? I applied. I was like, hey, I'm looking for a job as a barber. I knew in London wages were different. Yeah. I had some friends that they'd been here before. Yeah. So I was like... Are you looking for a barber? My English wasn't good, but wasn't even terrible. I could speak a little. Yeah. And um, yeah. Were you, were you qualified as a barber then? Or no. You weren't? No. Okay. And that's another thing. In Italy, to open your own shop, you need a qualification. Okay. But it's uh, quite different from here. You need okay. like a five years qualification. Five uh, years? Yeah. You have to study. You have to go to school to be a barber. Then you come out, you might not be able to, to give someone a haircut yeah. because... Yeah. 
it's skills are something else, but five years. Yeah, yeah. that's you another. Learn, like, you learn on the job, right? Becoming a you, you have to learn. Is yeah, it's supposed to becoming like a doctor. Or something, yeah, I, I, I mean, mean, it kind of is. It used to be it used to be the to, same thing, yeah, right? Yeah. So no, yeah, it's, it's a bit crazy, mm. right? Five mm. years is a lot. There is some way to not do that. Back in the days, you could do just five years of apprenticeship. Okay. Sorry, the way I pronounce it is a bit weird, but uh, basically, the day after the guy, which it was my birthday, that's why I remember the date so well. It was the sixth of August. Right. He texted me. He was like, "I need a barber now." I'm 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 in deep shit, <laughs> and <laughs> I, I need a barber. Come from Italy, I don't care. I'll pay for your trip. Or you have to come now. And this guy is my partner in business today. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. Still. Still. How many years are we talking? We 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 had a break in between mm -hmm. because I thought uh, London wasn't for me. I stayed one year, and I was like, I I want to go back home, and yep. you know, I had, I've got family there. I've mm -hmm. got everything. Uh, I don't come from a desperate situation that I'm like, I can't go home. I, there's no war in Italy. I come from yeah. Milano. It's, it's, it's yeah. wealthy. You know, it's, we can't, I can't complain about yeah. that. So um, I, I tried to go back and do my things there. It just didn't feel right, if okay. it makes sense. I don't know. When you try places like London that are so multicultural, True. diverse, yeah, unique. it's hard to move back to a reality that, yes, Milano is, is like a... It's like a metropolitan city, so it's very mixed and diverse, mm -hmm. but not as much as London. Mm. No chance. And so when I moved there, it didn't feel right. I felt um, like there was no space for me and there was no future. So I traveled a little bit. I lived in the States for three months. I tried. Didn't work out. You know, the visa thing is tricky. Yeah. Very hard. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I, I didn't want to spend so much time on it. And so I came back in London just to say hello to people, just to have a little trip. And I liked it so much. I felt home and I was like, you know what? Now I'm stable. I wanna, I wanna be and here. that's pretty much the, the journey. But still, we always kept in touch, me and my partner in business, yeah. because we, we're good friends. Mm -hmm. or, um, you know. It's good to keep positive relationships, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and you never really know where a relationship can come from. Obviously, that came from just a Facebook advertisement. Actually, it was a bit funny because in the beginning, we didn't get on much. Like, it's not that we didn't get on, but um, he didn't like me. He didn't like my way of cutting hair. I, yep. I've been cutting hair at home for like five years, right? So I'm I'm not a professional. <laughs> I am able to cut hair. I am yeah. able to create a haircut. But I was doing funny things like body, funny body positions or sticking my thumb out. That he, you know? <laughs> he wasn't used to, right? Yeah, he was a professional. It was like, you have to change that. You have yeah. to stop doing that. Just start being professional. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, I haven't liked anything you've done. You have to change this. You have to change that. So it was a bit uh, controversial. He said know. that? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, um, brutal. <laughs> very brutal. Yeah, I mean, very at least he was up front, yeah. though. Hey, it was his business, right? Mm. I why should he lie to me? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I he told me after. So yeah, for me, I think that's kind of positive, you know, to be upfront, honest. But that's how you learn the most. You learn, yeah. yeah. You you won't learn if if you don't get uncomfortable. Yeah. If you're always comfortable with your th with your thing. You just stay where you are, yeah, right? I think it's that self-awareness as well, because some stuff you might not realize. It gave it me a other people. good shake. Be like, yo, yeah. yeah, start doing better. If not, you lose your job. Mm. And uh, I was sleeping in the barbershop in the beginning as well, because really? I didn't have money. I came, I mean, out of nowhere, this guy calls me, come in, come in UK. I had yeah. like 200 euros on my bank account. You know, I was still a student. So I just really finished. putting yeah. yourself out there, isn't yeah. it? On the line, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that many times. And how was that? That specific period, you know, you felt you must have felt like oh, horrible, <laughs> <laughs> horrible. I, I wouldn't say for a moment it's been nice. It was horrible. I, I like you going bad, and you feel like oh man, why am I doing this? Yeah. Why am I living? I, I've got such a good reality back home. Yeah. Why am I here? But that's that's the spirit you have to you know take over. You have to transform your energy when yeah. it's such a negative energy around you. Yeah. You have to transform and push it outside in strength, energy, positive energy and uh, will to do mm -hmm. things. And, you know, that, that's the way. The do way you think kind of that method is you use it a lot in just in life in general? Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I used to do a um, little bit of Latino dance. Really? I, I don't even know how to call it. Like salsa, bachata. Mm -hmm. I, I studied that with okay. my dad. I, we used to go together. Nice. And um, I've done... 
I, I competed once, okay? It was something that you do once a year. And my teacher Wait, taught competition. me this. No, yeah, I wasn't at that good. It just, it was nice to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. And my teacher taught me this. It was like, you see how stressed you feel? He goes, push your stress into that energy that will make you do that dance move that you wouldn't be yeah. able to do normally. Almost yeah, like Dom, a conversion. Convert, yeah, convert that energy. That's that's free energy, convert it, right? And that's, he told me something for life. Like that's even today, right? I mean, I'm I'm here talking and I'm talking about my, my personal things yeah. and, you know, on, on record. Laying it bare. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm, I'm transforming the energies that maybe I'm, I'm worried, maybe I'm stressed out about it, maybe I don't want to say the wrong mm. things, but I'm just mm. going to I think that's a, push a, it a really good way of thinking, to be fair, because, I mean, when you're carrying energy inside of you, you know, it can weigh down, so you kind of do need that method of release. And it can Correct. be it can be a million different things. You know, some people do boxing, like you said, it could be dancing, it can be a lot of things. Um, but I, d- I did get where you're coming from 100%. Yeah, I think that's a really positive way to, to deal with stuff. Absolutely. I, I picked up something really interesting from your Instagram as well. It's which was more about your mood. And I think as people in barbers or hairdressers, you almost expect it every day to be 100% and happy and smiley and things like that because obviously we're serving you know, people and that's how we expect it to be. There was one thing you said and it was like, you know, if I'm not feeling talkative or I'm feeling a little bit down, he said, you're quite open with your customer. And I thought that was a really good thing because nine times out of 10, people will try and mask it. But actually you said, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really feeling myself or something's going on outside the barbershop. How, how does that how does that go with customers? Do they re- are they quite receptive to that or? I think there's uh, nothing better than honesty. Exactly, yeah. yeah. People, people understand. People are smarter than what you think. Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, you know, we, we expect people not to understand or not being empathetic. They all understand. And sometimes you have a bad day. Mm. I was breaking up with my ex girlfriend, and I was like, "Look, I'm, I'm not feeling well. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not feeling very talkative. I promise you, I'll give you the best haircut. That that's what I said. Yeah, yeah but that's exactly why that. what I tell people, and and I understand. Mm. Or when I see them, and likewise for them, if I see them, they're not in a good mood. I might not push it. I might not keep asking, how was your holiday yeah. or how was your day? You just or... kind of be cautious. And... Yeah, it just, okay, I understand. Maybe yeah. it will answer to me in a, yeah, in a, in a really way good. that is not enjoyable, but I just, hey, the guy's not having a good day. Why not? He's my client. Yeah. I have to, you know, I have to understand him. In regards to your clients, obviously you're based in central London, so you must get a lot of different clients. So yes. how is the profile? To be honest, it's um, so mixed that I can't define a specific type of clients. Um, We definitely have a majority of office people, people that works in the office and come into the city, right? There's not many locals. That's one thing I can say. Mm. There's not a big community. There is a little, small community around there, but it's little. Okay. Yeah. During lockdown, it was empty. I can imagine. Empty. There was no but there's one thing I want to know, kind of, because obviously you're known very well on socials. A lot of videos going kind of all around the world. Do you get anybody like specifically messaging you coming from afar? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I get anything. I get people traveling from abroad, not for the haircut, but be like, I'm traveling uh, in two months. That day, I want you to cut my hair. Can I book in? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Or people coming from outside London. Yeah, generally that, or mainly it's barbers that they're like, I'm coming to London to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly are barbers. How does it make you feel? I'm, I'm okay. I am. Yeah, it makes me feel good. I don't, you know what? Anybody who comes in my shop and gets a haircut with me, it, it gives me the same feeling. I'm mm-hmm. grateful that you're walking through that door. Even because I saw that door without anybody walking through for a long time. Yeah. You know, the beginning when I opened the business wasn't easy. We went through COVID. Yep. You know, it was really tough. I can so imagine. now anybody who walks in, I'm just great that you're in. Then doesn't matter where you come from, you're in. And I'm like, thank you. Thank, thank you for yeah. coming, for trusting me and to get a haircut with me. I'm very that's grateful. That's really, really good because I think obviously once you get popular, it can be easy to kind of lose sight of kind of just the basisness that you're actually getting business in. Um, so I think that's, that's really, really interesting. Um, your content, when I first saw it, I was like, this is very different to what I've seen, you know, on Instagram, TikTok for kind of normal barber stuff. So how did you kind of develop the idea and concept? Trial and error. Okay. 
I, I tried so many different videos before it worked and they failed all. How long was that kind of trial and error? A couple of years. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, a couple of years. I kept trying new things. I tried to do comedy as well. Oh, really? Not comedy. I'm not a comedian. But um, <laughs> funny funny videos. Like, I tried I tried different ones. Yep. And then at a certain point, I decided I want to create a line. I want to be distinctive. I want to people to recognize me, you know. And I was like, okay, I need to make it in a certain way. So I bought the background and I started doing it in a certain way. And then, again, trial and error. Mm. In the beginning, my videos were longer. Uh, more detailed, less lights, you know, and, and then you buy an extra light and then you start to do shorter uh, cuts, yeah. right? Maybe before you used to leave five second scene and now you do one mm. or 0 0.5. It's, it's still today, it's all a trial and error, even because I do everything by myself. Mm. I, I, I just um, employed an assistant, so not fr from now on someone is going to help me out because it's becoming too much. But Okay. Yeah. No, it's really impressive, and I think we'll probably throw up some videos on the screen so everybody can see. Fantastic. Another thing I want to ask you is about kind of day-to-day -day barbering. Has anybody asked for any kind of wild, outlandish haircuts? Yeah, uh, well, definitely we get a lot of weird requests, right? Uh, sometimes outrageous, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Not only about haircuts in general, but um, I have to say the average is quite um, classic, okay. okay? Quite soft. But yeah, sometimes, yeah, you go over the line right because the reason i asked is because i want to play a tiny little game okay where we can get your kind of opinions and ratings on some different haircuts let's say um so i've got the ipad in front with all the haircuts on so the first one is this guy this is christian perisic okay what's your thoughts bold <laughs> <laughs> definitely um first time i see like um wow okay uh very red <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. I've seen um, like check, yeah, uh, checkboards. How would you call it? Checkboard, checkerboard. Yeah. You're Chester. asking the wrong guy. I've got no idea. It's what a Croatian. That's He's called. a Croatian footballer. So it's a Croatian ah, flag. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Well, respect for that. Mm -hmm. Respect for that. Um, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would say I've, I'm sorry. We don't do that, but not because I don't want to do it. I don't do colors. Here we go. Ah, okay. Would be a good excuse. Okay, out of <laughs> ten, what what are you rating it? Uh, for for the courage uh, and uh, <laughs> because you know it's is his country and he's right. proud of it. We'll so. give him a four. <laughs> All, right. All right. The next one is oh, wow. Robert Patterson. This is an interesting one. I don't know what was he thinking, but um, definitely wanted to shock the crowds. Right. I mean, I I I, I don't understand it. Is a very very weird look. Are we going above the four or? Prison? No, no, no. This is a this is a one. This is a one <laughs> because I've been kind. This wow. is really bad. Okay. Un no, unlucky. but even because look, if you see properly in in terms of barbering, right, you can even zoom it in a little, and the line it, is not precise. It doesn't. It's look, a bit chopped it, off. Yeah, it doesn't. So look is that a DIY job? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's well shaved, so, <laughs> and yeah, it is just very imprecise. So whoever did that, sorry, no, uh, not, right. for me. not for me. One for Robert Patterson. <laughs> Next up is... Okay. Justin. Well, he's got, he always had cool hairstyles, pretty yeah. much, pretty much part of some, but mainly cool hairstyles. Um, definitely, I think a haircut like this on 90% uh, of the people will look very floppy. Yeah. Mm. He's got a stylist behind that yeah. they style his hair. So overall at the end, uh, between the styling and the cutting, and mainly the styling, I would say, I'll give it a, a good seven. Seven, yeah. okay. Yeah, it is we good. There? <laughs> it, it, it is a good, like, it's a good look, but I don't think anybody can pull it off. Pull it off, yeah, quite yeah. specific. Cool, okay, seven for Justin Bieber. Next one is uh, okay. Shia LaBeouf, who is a, is a different type of guy. You know, sometimes he's a bit out there. Um, this is... Do you know what? I like this. 
Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's very, it's very mean, right? It's very weird, mean. I don't know. It's, it's got. It's quite strong. Yeah, exactly. I I kind of like it. The execution of the haircut maybe maybe could have been done differently, mm. but sometimes you know it's um, on haircut like that. You don't want it too well done. Mm. Sometimes I get people coming in the shop and they ask me, for instance, for mullets, and they want like a bad mullet. So okay. they want to see some rough, see. rough and ready yeah. into it. Yeah. And I think if you're a good hairdresser or barber, you have to actually know how to get the rough that, look. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's a very rough look. So I'll give him an eight. Eight, for my personal okay. Taste. Wow. Even if it's weird. I like weirdness like that. Eight out of ten for Shia LaBeouf. Okay, this man. A bit controversial at the moment. Um, well, this haircut has been seen and Cristiano seen over Ronaldo. and over. It's not really... I would do this haircut very differently. It's not really my style. There's no squareness to it, but I know people like it yeah. and people did like it. It's a bit out of fashion, I think. Yeah, no, it is now. No? Well, don't you think? That, that you don't see many people with that. No, I anymore. think this is his worst one, yeah. in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll give it a five. Five. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Cristiano. Yeah, I oh, know, I agree. A young Ronaldo with the, with the with bit the floppy falling down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the best, he was better in his heyday. Um, yeah. Unlucky, Cristiano. And then last but not least, uh, <laughs> we've got our okay. boy, Paddy. <laughs> it's funny because I don't like the haircut at all, mm. but um, I give a, a nine because the the guy made me curious about himself because yeah. of his haircut. Yeah. I, I would it have is. never watched, I don't watch sports, yep. as I mentioned yeah. before with you guys. <laughs> and um, I checked him out because of his haircut. I was like, who's this guy? So his, his haircut is making him like an idol. It's right? definitely intriguing. Yeah, you, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. And then he, he, I'm his fan now. I watch his stuff. I mm. don't watch UFC or any fighting sports yeah. or anything like that. But I did watch his fights because he made me curious with his haircut. And yeah. now I, I <clears> like <throat> it on him. I, I think he should never change it. He wears it well, right? I always think that. No, he pulls it off he 100%. Does. Yeah, he, he, he does yeah. pull it off. And yeah, I, I like it. So Why we're giving not? a nine to Paddy. Yes. Yes. We also yeah. have to say that, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't want to get beaten. <laughs> so obviously you've seen Paddy on um, social media. I did, I did. And um, your big social media yourself. Um, but in terms of your usage and your thoughts towards social media, tell us a bit about that. So I don't spend loads of time on social media scrolling. I'm not going to lie. Right. Um, most of the time I spend on social media, which is a lot, mm -hmm. I spend loads of hours on it, is answering DMs okay. and comments. Because I answer to every single DM. I, I, sometimes I get <laughs> Every single one. Every single one. The only one I skip are like, hey, would you like to grow your page up yeah, to 100,000 followers? <laughs> and that one, yeah. I just cancel it. Yeah. It's spam. So yeah, you heard that first, guys. Andrea answers every single I DM. I answer every, every single, single DM. DM. <laughs> so get in there. You can text Slide me anytime. <laughs> Anything you want to know. I love that. I, That's I really positive, that. to be yeah. fair. I, I, I love when people text me. I'm, I'm great that people... That, like... If you think about it, if I'm here today, it's because there's people like them that yeah. they want to, to know about me and and that makes it great. So I, I'm not going to deny an answer if someone wants to ask yeah, me, even something that I don't... Two-way. Yeah, I love it. Uh, anytime someone needs an answer or, well, he's got a question for me or even just to want to say hi. Some people just say, hi, bye, mm. how are you? I like what you do. I, I'm grateful about That's really positive. Really, really positive. In terms of kind of the effects of social media, because obviously it's a big thing. Kind of, do you see it as a positive thing, or what's your thoughts? Kind of, I am. Um, I would say ninety nine percent positive okay. on the usage of social media. It's changing my life mm. completely, radically, and um, it's giving me an opportunity that um, I don't think anybody had before. Without it, yeah? yeah. So back in the days, if you wanted to to be seen and be known. I mean, you would have to go through traditional channels, which they were very well established. And then you had to go through a sort of process, right? And not it, you would be picked mm. yeah. by who? By judges. Yeah, right. People that do auditions and stuff like that, that decide if you are good for them or not. Right here. No, you got the whole world watching you. It is a great opportunity for our generation, Definitely. but I don't think it will be there for long. Oh, really? Whatever we are doing now, one day is going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. It's gonna be hard 
because now it's it, it's like it's like a new world. It's like we we just discovered the United States, right? And everything is empty, and we can pick our land and build up. Right, yeah, and that's what we're trying to do. Actually, is already well built now, and soon it's gonna be all for sale. Right, all is gonna have value, and so you wanna be big on social media. Yeah, you're gonna have definitely to pay right. and to sponsor, and yeah, you know that's what they want, right? Yeah, um, monetization is a, a big, big thing. I said 99 because there's a one percent that is very toxic on social media. Um, there's a lot of haters. A lot of people get their frustration out do, to, do you get any of that towards yourself i when videos go really viral yes okay. i do get haters there's always someone has to say something about it <laughs> yeah whatever, whatever how do you feel with that how do you deal with it i don't care i'm, I'm glad that they spend time commenting my videos <laughs> <laughs> i'm like keep going <laughs> but um i can say that once only once i'm not gonna lie i woke up I didn't feel great that morning. You know, yeah. sometimes you just wake up, you're, you're not happy as yep. you should be. And I read this comment and it hurt me. And, and I was like, you know what? I can understand why some people, you know, if they're not mentally stable, stable yeah. can can get really hit by this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I just had one comment that hit me hard yeah. and I was so sad about it. I was like, it made me doubt everything about myself. Really? Yeah, it was just a simple, stupid comment. And sometimes it's just it's just like that, right? And um, I overcame that very quickly. I mean, I'm an adult. But I think um, kids shouldn't be on, on that. Kids shouldn't be able to, to be on the same page as we are on social media. Even if, you know, nowadays kids are there. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that because in the developing stage maturity levels kind of you need a bit yeah, of a safeguard yeah. you need to be stuff. mentally stable don't get me wrong anything in life you have to be mentally stable mm. if you are unstable anything can disrupt your life but it's just so unregulated you know? yes 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 it's as uh, as we say this free land now is wild and yeah you get wild people on it any other challenges through social media well it's it's hard to keep up it's hard to keep up. There's a lot of expectation mm. uh, from people. And, um, you know, you always have to constantly create new things. Yeah. And I feel like it's, it's a constant loop. I mean, that's what social medias are about. They yeah. want you to keep yeah. producing content. It's, it is it is like that, right? It's a turning wheel. And uh, sometimes you get a lot of expectation, especially when you start building up so many uh, followers that they, they start watching your content and you don't want to bother them. Yeah. You don't want you want to make them happy. Do you ever feel any pressure? <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Of course, of course. Um, but I love, I love that kind of stuff. Feed off it. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Yeah. 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 I it think feeds, it's about. It feeds my ego as well. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's about that kind of conversion that you were mentioning earlier. Exactly. Kind of I'm stressed. It. Let me use this energy positively and do something about it. Okay. I think Instagram obviously evolves quick as well, but I think we're in such an ever evolving industry yeah you know it's always changing from one day to the next and i suppose like you say instagram is a great sort of platform for that and for you to get your work out there it's almost like you know creating your portfolio isn't it you know? absolutely but not so. only instagram there's tiktok mm. youtube, youtube. Exactly. and uh, i guess soon twitter is going to change right yeah, yeah now that elon's you I know cutting everything and kind of what is he charging for the verification now Oh, I it, think so. Yeah, uh, you can okay. pay eight dollars to get verified and have a uh, I, I never <laughs> checked uh, Twitter. Is for me, it's kind yeah. of. I think it's going to be a big thing because I can't wait. You know, when he does stuff, it's normally very like, impactful. He is good hyping stuff, right? He yeah, amazing yep. hyping stuff. So he is very, very good. Um, so you mentioned YouTube. Yes. So YouTube is a new journey that I'm starting, and um, I want to make things a little bit more interesting, a little bit more deep. Okay. Right. And I'm going to start reviewing products and tools and, uh, you know, or vlog. I don't know. It's something that I'm doing out of fun because um, building up a community on YouTube is very hard. Yeah. It's, it's not easy at it all. It used effort, to be very investment. easy. Right. Yeah, YouTube now, is the example. But now everybody wants to do it. So it's kind of like, can you really be out there? But, um, you know, I, I have zero expectation when I do these things as I had zero on Instagram or on yeah. TikTok. So I just keep going. And um, you know what? I, well, I always like to say that I'm a doer. I do. Mm. I just do. Yeah. Sometimes without thinking too much about it and yeah. see how it goes. And we'll see. 
if it work out or no, not. No, that's really, really positive, you know, right? Because a lot of people would be kind of a bit cautious, like kind of almost scared. But you seem like everything you really kind of upfront with it and, and do. Yeah, Absolutely. So what would you say to people that kind of want to kind of emulate, you know, what you've done, the success you've had? What would you say to them? Oh, um, the stop thinking about what everybody else thinks. I don't remember who told me something like you. You'll never be as young as today. You will never be in this moment. So what are you waiting for to do what you want to do? Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, I started this journey when I start seeing on YouTube uh, barbers starting to push certain hairstyles and I yeah. got intrigued by all of this and I didn't for many years basically most of my career because I was scared of everybody else's judgment I thought maybe I'm not good enough maybe I can't do it or nobody will like this yeah. right and that's the worst thing you can do to yourself because what if they don't like it I mean what's gonna happen yeah, what's the worst that can happen yeah you, what, what about that so if any if they don't like it, you just posted a picture of a haircut, right? You haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that's how you have to start. Just go do it. Makes what makes you feel good, and um, don't think about what other people think because one day all these people are gonna be dead, you included, and so <laughs> you're not gonna have time to do it again. It's a harsh but true fact. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Do now, deal later. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So you mentioned obviously YouTube. Is anything else that's kind of coming? Any secrets that you can? Yeah, there's. A, I've got like a tons of project to be honest, and um, one of those is uh, my little academy slash studio, okay. where I'm gonna film most of my 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 trims. Probably I'm gonna start doing some online live sessions okay. for uh, privately. Obviously, everything get goes quite private. I'm working by uh, now. It's been two years that I'm making and destroying my online academy because of the social pressure that yeah. I'm feeling out of all these followers. And I'm like, I have to do it better, better and better and better. I keep investing money and try to make it as good as possible. So the online academy, the studios, then we got in plan some, some new tools, okay. some of my signature line. So we got the scissors with a good friend of mine and uh, is a great company in Italy, it's called Aquila. And they do sizzles. We nice. gonna do, we're gonna do some some extra products like we're thinking combs and uh, stuff like that. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, I've got a lot on my plate now, and I'm. I'm it sounds it. <laughs> I'm happy about it. I, it sounds I love it. it. You are a busy guy, but I do mm. really rate and respect kind of your work ethic to kind of do, 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 and, and keep doing. I think it's really commendable. So I mean, it's the same with Slick, right? Uh, you guys are everywhere. You're pushing everything. Yeah in every single aspect so we're definitely doers as well yeah uh, it's do 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 keep things moving um stay ahead of the game and i think pretty much you're exactly the same um so yeah i think you align with the brand really really well um with all the stuff that you mentioned where's the best place for people to kind of follow would it be instagram yeah it depends I've, I've, now i'm what i'm trying to do uh, it's to differentiate the free platforms okay. so until now i've been posting let's say 10 reels a week okay yep. every week on three different platforms. So Reels, Shorts, or TikToks, right? Now, what I would like to do is to differentiate on TikTok, become a bit more informal, fun, trending, you know? Free, yeah. Whether on Instagram, keep it a bit more professional, because I think most of the barbering community is still on Instagram, yep. and it won't yep. move for a long time. So that stays professional and educational. TikTok, I would like to switch it a bit more for the public. And YouTube, I see it more as an inside thing as I'm blogging or uh, I can show some uh, reviews of products yeah. and so on. So this is the plan to differentiate on every platform and hopefully having people follow me on every platform because every platform has to give you something. Nice. Sounds like a good plan. Um, we'll be sure to put all the links to the socials, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram down below. So you guys make sure you follow Andrea to keep updated. Make sure you follow Slick Gorilla as well. Um, and stay tuned for the next podcast. I'd like to thank Andrea. Thank you very much, bro. Hey, thank you. Thank and you also Ashley for joining. You guys. Um, if you guys have got any questions, you can also drop them in the comments as well. But stay tuned for the next one. Thanks, guys.